Okay. And you see my notes on the right side, I think. I mean, I haven't written any yet, but you, we can communicate with each yeah. other on the right side. Okay, good. All right. So we have uh, we are breaking all sorts of new ground here. Um, we uh, are continuing on with our series. And uh, Gamer Man has agreed again to um, join me in reviewing this uh, tremendous game between two champions, um, Farm Boy and uh, Andrew AA Gamer. Um, I look at some point in time to get Farm Boy on here. He seems very gracious. He's actually answered some of our questions, interacting with us about um, uh, some things that happen uh, both in Persia and China, particularly. And uh, yeah, um, so let's uh, let me start the screen share. I don't have all two hours, so uh, I do probably have to get to something else because I have to go to back to work tomorrow. So um, screen share. So I did. Uh, I was able. I don't know if you saw my video. I was able to get out to the Battle of Lexington and Concord this morning. I did notice that it was raining, right? Uh, no, uh, it's probably just my bad video. Um, oh. but, uh, it was, uh, it was pretty cool. Um, I've been there. Th this is my third time. Okay. Um, I was shocked at how many people were there. It was, nice. uh, pretty tremendous. So, okay. So, uh, let me take us all the way up to the, to the top. I've already, um, got a few of those things out. The history laid out. And you will remember, or maybe not, that uh, probably for clicking on this, that we have said that we thought the uh, allied player was in good position. Definitely. Definitely. Um, and, and we have noted um, that something must go terribly wrong here. Uh, I don't think we're going to come on that um, okay. in these uh, three turns that I'm attempting to get to. I'm going to be a little more humble this time. Um so here we go. It's the top of third turn. Just to uh, give you an overall view, I'll try to keep it tight. Uh, we do have a strong position uh, for the Navy, both in Hawaii as well as, nope, not yet. Not yet in there. That's right. He's in 54. Um, he said, by the way, uh, just to let you know, we did contact, uh, Farm Boy has been very gracious and answered a lot of the questions. He says Java is his standard, I mean, I'm sorry, Samoa is his standard movements yeah. um for the cruiser and the transport off of uh, east uh, eastern europe when he's uh, not uh, allowed to go to war um when he's like a, uh andrew telegraphed um he probably didn't care that it was going to be a delayed uh japan declaration of war yes he did and so farm boy knowing that sent ships and men from uh Eastern U.S. down to the Pacific Theater rather than sit there and pick the nose. Right, right, right. Very good, very good. Uh, the other thing I um, I thought of afterward, and I put it in the comments underneath the videos, is that I know we're not um, we were not uh, thinking that this tw these twelve units um, in the Soviet Far East were doing any good, but the good they could be doing, or or I think are doing, is they for one thing put that factory right there. Um, which we we thought was a mistake. And the other thing they're doing is they're pinning these 10, 13 units here. So, you know, whatever you want to say about those six units that went back toward Moscow, we can certainly, uh, that are now sitting in Timgushka, we can certainly agree that those 10 units are going nowhere, I wouldn't think. Um, so that's one thing I thought of later on as I was considering this game. All right, let's go to the German buy. Well, actually, before you... Oh, before, sure. Go ahead. You know, I want to go back also with one thing um, that I'm just learning uh, this weekend. Um, I've just played a few games in the last... A uh, few really tough games in the last two years. Before that, I was I was uh, away for quite a while. So I don't remember if I learned this before, but with the German push towards the Ukraine, you may remember in JDAO's video, he said he wants his Germans in Ukraine by G4. Yes. Which is basically as fast as possible. Now, right there where your mouse is at, there are 25 German infantry. And I am playing the best player in the world right now, and that is Adam for the first time. Yeah. And I know he's going to do this. Uh, it's how he's got it stacked up. He's done oh. it against others. And I was grinding out my Russia turn. And I'll go ahead and share this. Um, sure. If you go back to Russia 
two, uh, beginning and end of the Russian turn. Beginning um, is right here, purchase. Now you remember Russia is my favorite uh, power. Okay. <laughs> A lot of players just uh, are kind of juking around. They don't know what Germany's going to do. They just kind of sit back and make sure they don't get hit. Well, yep. here, um, Farm Boy has a fair force on Belarus and West Ukraine. And what I discovered is at the end of Russia, too, if you maximize your pressure on East Poland, where the Germans uh. absolutely want to enter, they have to pull up ground units from Romania to East Poland. They can't plow into Bessarabia and East Poland with impunity. Excellent. So that, and that is, and I'd have to run the numbers here, but I think uh, it's another thing that you give up with the Union Gambit. He oh, had okay. five fast units down there in China. And without them, uh, I don't think he can exert very much pressure on East Poland. I just point this out just because it's, uh, it's so easy to overlook this or hard to understand what's going on there. Yeah. But if you click to the end of G3. End of G3. Uh, the total end of the, uh, this is the oh, just complete the end. end. Germany's round three. Uh, Germany's round three. Uh, Germany's round three. This one expanded yet. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, right here, I believe, is Germany. Nope. Two. There you go. Three uh, there uh, is go. just one little line. Yep, it's hiding. There we go. End of. There we go. End of G3. He plowed Seven. them all right into Bessarabia. All 25. Uh, and so those are going to storm into the Ukraine on G4. And then he's just. Mm -hmm. Huge spearhead into South Russia, which is the nightmare for the Allies. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Good. But I think that's a big factor as to what happens in the future. Um, even though I haven't seen round four and five yet, um, yeah. that's big. Nice. Nice. This is this is great detail. That's uh, that's that's pretty tremendous. The Eastern Front uh, in War Room is uh, is absurdly complex um but even here we see a lot of complexity now that's great detail thank you thank you gamer man uh let's uh, let's go and we find that the germans have built 13 mechs um how do you feel about this build um it's it's Turn typical for um yep. in the early rounds um he doesn't have pressure coming from the western front He's not mm -hmm. worried about Normandy and Holland. So put her all in the ground uh, to get maximum ground units in, deep into Russia. Um, that's just kind of a not thinking move. I'm not saying it's bad. That's just, that's reflex. Yep. That's habit. You just do it. Okay, good. There are two transports in 92, just to uh, let you know. Uh, a little hard to see there with the AAA confusion, but uh, there are two transports for units that can launch somewhere and obviously they have a purpose okay let's keep going and let's uh let the animation uh carry us along so that oddly placed uh transport and cruiser come in handy and are used in the invasion of archangel and the move is uh Karelia and i assume viborg and baltic states into novgorod um uh not I'm assuming not too large of a force. Uh, okay, so the big commitment right there is the Ukraine force, and now we're into battles. Those are all; these are all really small battles. No real, um, and no, there wasn't significant dice rolls, I should say. Um, Belar Belarus gets a small treatment. West Ukraine gets a small treatment. But a huge move into Ukraine, just like you said. Very good. You're looking like a genius right now. Um, Poland, mech moves in there. Okay, and uh, three mech to East Poland. One bomber from Novgorod, East Poland. And then the uh, fighters going into Northwest Persia. Okay, one mech moved from, I'm just going to open up the side here, from uh, to Poland. Pressure is on. And then... 
a move to France to shore up an, a reactionary force in France. Uh, and the sub also continues on, not needing to be an arcane uh, 125 anymore. And a, a mech coming out of Karelia, uh, coming out of Norway, goes to uh, Karelia, placing the units ten, obviously in Germany, and three in Western. And this looks um, looks to be pretty good. Let me just open up the right panel in order to show you the income. Um, and the income is a base of 48 plus bonuses. Oops. Okay, we did have some loss to blockade, three loss to blockade, and then he ends up with $58. So it would have been 61 if he hadn't been blo um, blockaded. Uh, this feels uh, like Andrew to me. Um, I mean, just really sleek and uh, efficient and diving to the south. Um, I'm playing a game with him right now, and uh, I just think he's the master of money. Uh, he's just really, he knows where the money on the board is, and that's where he's going. So good defense in Norway, uh, I mean, kind of pre uh, preempting any any sort of thought of invasion, maybe even stopping it before it starts. Um, all right, uh, I will move on to Russia 2. Oh, wait, please. Yes, sure. <laughs> uh, and will you zoom out a little bit? That might be hard to. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. View map, and I'll go to 68. Is usually my. Do you know the shortcut for that, sir? I do not. Tell me. Uh, hold down the control button and mouse wheel down. Okay, control button and mouse wheel down. Oh, very nice. You have helped me so much right now. Okay, is this good? Sure. Yeah, that's a lot better. Thanks. All right. Sure. Okay, uh, if I may, just you a may. couple things. Um, here's a small one, but sometimes the small things are huge. Uh, Norway with seven men and an AA, um, that is, they do not need to be sitting there right now because transports of 92 cannot hit Norway. True. So they might as well be in Finland. Okay, yeah, good. Um, and I do like uh, the the... It's fun to watch the journey of the Luftwaffe. They're kind of circumnavigating the Black Sea. They are. They're they're protecting those Italians, but but now already um, they are in range of the Eastern Front. Yes. Yeah. I still don't like that there's not a plane out there in West Germany to um, to protect the Western Front. You see seven infantry and an artillery in France. You see uh, the mech that he built in West Germany. Uh, he probably wants those. He needs those to prevent allied landings. You don't need so much if you've got a plane or two up there. Right. Right. Good. Excellent. Okay. Let's uh, continue on. The Russian buy is pretty standard. Uh, Ten infantry and one mech. And then I will let the animation speak for itself as he moves more troops uh, forward. Um, into Bryansk as well as he's going to prevent he's going to prevent the uh, can opener. Um, he's going to commit. Uh, he's actually going to commit something surprising a little in a little bit here. Um, at least I was surprised. Uh, and Caucasus gets all of its forces back from China, or it's on they're on their way. And Tim Gushka moves back, and now the placement of the troops one in Vol uh, Vol uh, Volgograd as well as ten in Russia. All right, um, uh, and then the money is uh, 25. So uh, you probably know that there's quite a number of people that are going into the, um, the Middle East with their um, Russians, trying to grab some spread of communism bonuses. Yeah. Uh, even, even down into the horn. Um, I, don't think he's, uh, I don't think he's there or has chosen not to do that. Um, but obviously that money would be coming in handy right now. Uh, comments on the Russians' turn? Uh, sure, I'll try to be quick here. Um, sure. Farm boy is uh, too good to leave units in, let me see if I scrub, um, China. Right. Uh, he's got, he knows he's got to pull them back. He's not going to sit there on his, or he's not going to go down there on his adventures for too long. Um, the Siberians are coming back. Uh, the only other thing is, 
I don't know the odds on Rostov, but I bet you they are very low because he cannot have the Germans get through to his Caucasus stack or Stalingrad. They right. have to be really low. He's defending against an Italian tank and the Italian Air Force, which is, I think, just two fighters and a bomber. So, um, yep. yeah, it's a, he's positioned in a way that he's absolutely, right now he's got to keep the Italians from um, clearing Rostov. Excellent. Good. Um, and, you know, the numbers right now are, I mean, it's 11, uh, 36, 46, uh, 51, uh, 52, and then the planes. So, you know, they're in the ballpark, but uh, we still, uh, you know, defensively, obviously, these two, uh, these 52 count as two. So uh, he is in good shape. And I would say uh, I like when the Russians can be as far forward as possible myself. Um, so I appreciate that. Okay, let's move on to the Japanese. Okay, the Japanese purchase is going to be one carrier, destroyer, fighter, four infantry, one mech, and three submarines. So that is going to be eight submarines um, in the last two turns. And uh, one, two, three, and six. Um, that's uh, six C units and five um, ground units, specifically ground units. So I just, uh, I like to take note of that um, and keep track of what is going on as far as the competition goes. Let's let the animation carry us. Okay, you have Soviet Far East. Can Su, uh, almost completely enveloping um, China. I'm gonna back out of that a little bit. Oops. And uh, get over back over here. Um, Shanxi, Quichao, Hunan, uh, and Shan. So, and here's an interesting one. Um, oh, no, not yet. Going into uh, Philippines, is that three or four? That's three so far, right? I've seen a game where Andrew got diced in Philippines, so um, he's confident. All right, French East FEC. Very low um, numbers. Uh, Yunnan gets one infantry. He's accepting the fact that there is a possibility of not winning that, but not committing a lot of infantry. Um, Hunan, he does commit two, but he's going to be... Um, He's going to be okay because there's no, going to be no one that can reach him. And gets a lot of forces. He loves French Indochina, I'm telling you. I've seen another game where um, he camped out in French Indochina. All these battles go well for him, um, even that one. Um, he didn't lose anybody. And then this lands planes on carriers, as well as in Quang Si. And then uh, he does bring some stuff back and then armor positioning. Okay, so he did lose Yunnan, um, interesting. Obviously he, he does move troops out of uh, Manchuria, 10, 10 uh, 12 uh, Russians against 10 now. Needs those ground units down south. Places through, oh, okay, he placed through more guys. And uh, so he's keeping the 12. The, now he's got 13 um, up in Manchuria. And then places the fighter and two infantry in Japan. And carry everything else in the Sea of Japan. He doesn't, he only has the one. For some reason, I thought he had two. No, not yet. Okay. Uh, does only has one factory. Ends the turn with, I believe it's uh, 69, 67, 67, 67 dollars for the Japanese. Let's zoom around the Japanese empire and show you an impressive situation. Sumatra is held by two and the money islands are held by 
uh, nobody um, positioned st strongly positioned in 35 as well as another smaller Navy protecting all those transports. I'm assuming at 36, can anyone reach them? Nope, no one can reach them. Nope, one, two, three, four. Nope, no one can reach them. All right, so uh, 11, 11 uh, fighters there, as well as two more down there. Everything focused on UNAN, I would think at this point in time, both these units as well as these units. and. No sea base in Hainan. Uh, so I think he uh, probably is very happy with seeing a KJF going on, and he is making $67, um, mauling China and, um, and having a fairly strong uh, and healthy uh, ground force in Asia. Your thoughts, Gamer Man? All right. Again, uh, disclaimer that... Um... Um, going kind of fast. I'm going to try to take high level. And so, but my thoughts are I'm stunned that there is no complex buy. Um, okay. There's a fighter for two more. You could have a complex. Uh, the one in Manchuria is not helping in, in the South. Right. Um, Malaya I, I, I is vulnerable to the allies taking it over, but maybe uh, Hong Kong. I do know that, I mean, I look just ahead one turn to see that he, he did build one yes. in Indochina. Um, but related to that, and this, I, I think this is the last thing, um, <laughs> is the, is the, is the complex and transport situation. To me, this is a big deal with Japan. How are you getting the ground units um, onto the mainland? Now, curiously, most players, in my opinion, will over rely on complexes. They'll buy several. They'll buy three by this time. Mm -hmm. um, and then they don't have to rely on their fleet, and they're not as worried about the allies and what they're disrupting. They can just build on the – so I like that that Andrew is actually going lighter than – he's only got one so far. Yes, right. He's got a lot of transports. I love that because transports are so powerful and unpredictable. Mm -hmm. um, but they're kind of sitting idle a lot here. As you said, no naval base at Hainan. I'm not saying he should have one, but but the fact is, is four transports can't reload from Japan. They're going to sit there for a turn. They're really not threatening um, the men on French Indochina. He doesn't want to take those off uh, away. Um, I suppose he's guarding against uh, the Allied take of some precious money islands, and he wants to take them right back. That's a that's okay. a possible. Um, sure. I'll, uh, so I'll stop there. I'll just say he's got a high yep. ratio. He's got a lot of transports. I love that. Low on ICs. I love that. But I don't see the transports getting men from Tokyo to Asia. Okay. Good. Uh, and of course, the uh, because there's no naval base there, there's no way to get him back to Japan anytime soon. He can draw off the um, factory with these transports. So he could bring four up here. But then, you know, obviously he can only... He can only build three out of this factory. Um, so I think as far as the future goes, if you're an um, uh, allied player reading this, I think this is, I think he is not communicating. To me, he is not communicating Calcutta Crush anymore. He, I think, is communicating, I am strong, come get me. That's what, I, that's what I'm thinking. Um, anyways, okay, let's move on. So uh, I'm going to open up the right side a little bit so you can see the American purchases. Um, so so uh, carrier, one infantry, three transports, one sub, three fighters. Um, I'm just going to tell you right now, I do not like this purchase. Uh, we saw five, um, five or six put into uh, this area, six, if you count the fighter. Um, and then he also threw two more. So uh, America is actually falling behind the uh, naval um, war in the Pacific, uh, in my opinion. But I could be wrong. I don't like the three transport purchases, but you're going to see that Farm Boy does have a standard move here that is really interesting. And it's, you know, I, I'm not the champion. He is. So I'm going to show you it to, show it to you, though. And uh, here it is. He's gonna he's gonna th um, take uh, Caroline, but he's also going to take Marshall. Um, 
he's concerned about these outlier islands and he is trying to make it so that um, there's no chance that the uh, Japanese Air Force has a place to land. Um, and I've talked to him about that. He's That's what he expressly, you know, he's going to throw away $21 worth of, quote unquote, throw away, $21 or uh, $14 at least of transports in order to make sure that Japan has no landing spots. So he is going to own Caroline and um, and there's going to be nothing Japan can do about it except for a frontal assault on and Nick picking at his uh, transports. Um, fighter goes to West Coast. Let me just, uh, I don't want to constantly move us if possible. So let me put these up here. Um, fighter goes to West Coast and then um, infantry to Central, two fighters in Eastern, three transports in uh, 101. So he is still dealing with restrictions, and now he's going to be freed from that as he gains, gains all these national objectives. Um, let me just open this up, and then we'll do a zoom over. And he's going to make the $72, $72 that you would think. He's got three transports here. He's got two fighters. He is um, he's taken Brazil. Uh, and then, oh, he's at, he is at war. What am I talking about? Philippines was taken. Um He's got these units here. He's got the two on the West Coast. Uh, and then he does have two scrambling fighters and a sub. So uh, I have seen in uh, some recent games um, where, uh, you know, in the championship last year where season six was sniped by a small Navy force, Naval and Air Force out of uh, Hawaii. But his big effort was to do this, to grab the Carolines as well as the Marshals. He has three transports, and like I said, he's going to wait. He's going to use them to eliminate some of these smaller islands. Okay, let's keep going. Anything you want to say about the American turn? Oh yeah, uh, love the buy. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, good. Tran the transports getting out uh, is great. You want to you want to put pressure on Japan here, and that transport at the Marshalls. If uh, Japan sends a sub out to sink it. That sub's dead. You just trade seven six. Okay. Yep. Taking sure. Caroline's uh, is major and yes. getting islands around it. So that'd be Marianas, Palau, and Marshalls. Those are the two around it, the three around it. Yep. Um, you take those, that reduces the threat of Japan attacking the fleet at 33 dramatically. Right. Right. Excellent. If you play with long range aircraft technology, uh, obviously, that's even more important. Okay, let's move on to China. Um, and let's go with the animation. Uh, so China is going to, uh, it does have, um, so it, it actually has the Burma Road, um, but he chooses this time to buy the infantry. Um, he's got five coming in. Does he move back to Yunnan, you wonder? Is that the question in your head? No, he does not, I don't think. Uh, he's going to do some skirmish battles. So again, this is great technique. If you are looking at, um, you know, a master at play, um, we're talking about some great technique here. Minimal exposure of ground units. Um, and, you know, he is not uh, necessarily guaranteeing, but these are, these are good, these are good uh, numbers. But he's still got this out of Burma, which can snipe Yunnan as well as Shan. Um, and then, uh, yeah, he's looking good. Um, now he goes, uh, the battles are end up the way you think they do. No surprises there. Oh, Kichau. Actually, I did want to note the Kichau battle. Let me just open up this uh, right side. Kichau does go a little unusual. Um, Let's see here. So he gets he all he gets all three misses the first round of combat to miss. Uh, and then there's they take one apiece. I'm not sure why I highlighted that battle now. <laughs> but I but I left it open for a reason. I'm not yeah. sure. All right. Um okay. Maybe it was Shen C that goes one of these battles doesn't go as planned. Maybe it's next turn. Chinese win? No, that's fine. No, no, no big deal. Okay. So I did, uh, what I'm trying to emphasize though, is I think he's really done a great job, um, farm boy at, uh, 
at uh, handling the skirmish battles in China. Okay, everything does move into Yunnan. He's back, back and better than ever. There it is, 23 places his purchases. And now, and he makes um, six with the Burma Road. He's got, he's back up to $12. Okay, so my thoughts are that um, I, if I'm the Chinese player, if I'm the Allied player, I want these planes to be concerned about Yunnan rather than being concerned about Caroline. So I, I'm, I want to provide opportunity for Caroline to do what Caroline does. And I want these planes to have to go here. Um, 23, 26, 27, 37, 39, uh, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 40, 46. So I'm seeing 46 units that could go into UNA next turn with no fear of, um, you know, skip, skip, skip to the do uh, to get into Calcutta. 12, uh, tw uh, 12, uh, 17, uh, 26, 27, 28. One, two, three. These planes can deceptively, these planes can hit it as well. So uh, your thoughts on China too, uh, China four. Yeah, one little one. Um, little things are big. And Farm Boy shows his veteran status and status as a respected allied player. That's a strong side with the two infantry artillery move into Shenxi there. Um, he takes a couple infantry only into Kui Chao. Um, you go ahead and you want to survive with a couple guys because Japan's uh, units are far more valuable. But in Shenxi, that's where he uh, moves his valuable artillery units. Um, the Japanese only have one man in Hopi. And if they're going to go get it, they're going to have to use the the mech and the tanks. And they don't do that. Very so good. he puts his artillery up there where it's uh, safer. Or if it is killed, it'll be units out of position. Out of position. Right, right, right. Uh, okay, excellent. Okay, purchase for the UK. Uh, one minor factory, five infant, six infantry, uh, and then for UKP, UK Pacific, two infantry. All right, let's see what they do. Let the animation work for us as we move into Iraq, as he brings the whole fleet that started out in Calcutta up to the Horn, invading Ethiopia. Uh, moving a blocker into Alexandria, I assume, and an invasion of Ethiopia. Nope, he's thinking about it. Okay, he is going to do that, but the Navy's not there. Uh, okay, he takes that, and he did not need the bombardment, I'm assuming. So, um, did I want to see that? No, I don't need to see that. Okay, non-coms. Here we go. I'm going to back off just a little bit on the size. Back it up a little bit, and we'll see some movements. Okay, so he right now is going to move a fighter into Russia. So he is he is doing the battle calc. He knows the numbers. He's going to retreat as the Italians retreated out of Alexandria. He's going to retreat back to Tunisia. He's going to move up from the south. Um, okay, from uh, Congo. Okay, and then the transport is going to go. Okay. And he's going to bring his navy up to, I think it's 81. Okay, and it looks like they moved. I'm going to just expand this to the left a little bit so you can see these words Gibraltar to C zone 92. And dropping them in Algeria. Wow, North Africa is a real, real front. He's going to place uh, what I call extreme cooperation. He places infantry and artillery onto a U.S. Uh, transport, and he is confident enough to now move out of Egypt, having uh, done a human's job of defending that place. 
moves into Union. Got a mech coming. Still got a strong force in India. I mean, uh, British undo number two. Okay, so here is the move that was a little. So this is um, <laughs> this is interesting. So places a fighter in Rostov. So he yeah. is he he's going to make sure that does not happen. That's game over if he loses that. Game over. Right, right, right. A lot of commitment to caucus. Like, what are the odds on the four infantry in an AA? I was like, I don't think it's low enough. And then the fighter swoops in. And, yeah, <laughs> there it is. Uh, that was funny. Um, yeah, one tank, two fighters, and a bomber. Five units versus uh, four. Um, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna make sure that doesn't happen. Obviously, kicking himself that he did not put one more Russian guy in there, I would think. Um, um, but maybe his Bryansk is that is that tight. So well, he's saving some Russian infantry with a UK fighter. Sure, um, that can be a good idea. Right, right, okay. Let's keep moving. Uh, so Caucasus now becomes huge. Um, like you. Like you said, we've got some very, very valuable units in there with uh, 21 fast movers as well as those planes be, uh, would be able to hit Caucasus. So, all right, let's move on from there. And that is the position. Let's move down and see that one factory went into Egypt. And then where did the infantry go? They go into South Africa. Uh, that transport has made the long voyage down from the Atlantic, I believe, and one infantry in UK, uh, London. They collect 34. They met a stat national objective for five more dollars. Um, and then uh, he places two infantry there. Um, okay, let's, uh, I'm just going to swing around the board. Oh, right there where you're at, then, real quick. Sure. I just want to say one thing. Yes. Um, so you commented on the a large British reinforcement into Yunnan and a pretty sizable force on India. And I thought India is not being directly threatened. Why not move into Burma? And it didn't take long to see uh, Burma is under tremendous threat. Um, there, all those transports, all those planes on Quang Si, even with no bases, Burma is not safe. Right. Uh, without the Chinese there. So there's an interesting decision there. And that is uh, Farm Boy has to decide how much does he dare move into Yunnan, how much it needs to stay back in India, because the Burma Road is uh, not a safe place right now. Right, right. Very good. Very good. So, uh, you know, these guys, uh, just to let you know again, emphasize again that um, I believe uh, that for a couple of turns here, we have not seen a lost battle. Um, so I mentioned in the last one that I thought that most of the battles were the loss of two units. Uh, this this round, we're going to see the Greeks lose four. Um, but other than that, um, uh, uh, most of the combat, except for the first turn, have been two units. Uh, and so attrition is not something they're going to necessarily do. Um, I have seen attrition from people, but uh, like I said, I'm I'm not seeing a lot of that kind of play. So let's uh, yeah, you, go ahead. By attrition, you mean? What? In other words, uh, putting out bait, uh, like for instance, you leaving Yunnan. Uh, if he had left these thirty units in Burma, um, it's uh, the uh, and the the uh, Chinese here to be attacked, um, you know, to be destroyed in detail. That's that's not how they're choosing to play. They're choosing to make Yunnan so it cannot be or will not be attacked. Um, yeah, that's right. That's right. We heard it from Andrew. Uh, these two uh, do not want the dice to beat them. Right. Not at this point. Right. Okay. Let's uh, keep going. The oh, uh, so I didn't mention. I just want to look at this configuration here. So we do have Lundley's aircraft. Um, there's no um, air base here in Egypt, so these have will take two turns to get to uh, Moscow, but there is no direct pressure on Moscow this turn. Interesting that look at this. So 
This is Belichick stuff. It's got to be Belichick stuff. I mean, look at this. He brings a bomber into Bryansk. Okay, that is a unit that is pushing the Belichick up to a, I'm sure, a, a position where he feels good about it. So I'm not sure the numbers on this, but it's certainly not 100 percent, and surely not certainly not zero percent. So there is a percentage chance that the Germans could launch an attack, and these two units were the result of him saying, this is the odds I want to give Andrew. Knowing that Andrew will take it, I would assume. Um, these guys headed toward Moscow. I like that. I like. I, I was like, um, obviously, this is very interesting. Um, you know, he dropped this. He's put three into here. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, He's, he's infusing the Middle East, even though both uh, Gamerman and I have said, hey, look, we could have a breakthrough pretty quick, um, whether it be Rostov, then Caucasus, and then you know trying to put up uh, blockers so he doesn't get here too fast. So how is he going to reinforce the Middle East? He's got these three and these three, um, and then he's got others coming in. Obviously, uh, I'm sorry, the South Africa factory. Um Earlier, he tried the Calcutta factory, but he had to move back. Okay, let's keep moving. Um, oh, let me just take a look. I got to take a look at London. So one of the things I like to do, always like to do, is you keep an eye on London. Because what's the first rule? Um, you know, what's your one job? You had, you, you know, that, that common phrase, you had one job. The one job is protect London. And he's fine. One, two, three. He could lose Scotland, but uh, that's not a big deal. And his air force is way out of out of range of London. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, the Italians. I did not see that this force moved here. Okay, so he is. He's now got some serious coordination. With three transports there, two there, uh, one transport there, two there. Okay, uh, we buy another fighter. Wow, and three infantry for the Italians. Okay, so that was $19. That is uh, good money for Italy, turn four. Okay, and he is going to take more troops out of Tobruk. I love that move myself. Um, he's going to invade Greece. I don't think he gets any hits on, on oh, I guess he got one, two, two, two hits. And then uh, that's it for Italy. Um, he does bring it forward, his can openers, his planes. His planes stay where they are, and he moves some into Paris. Very Normandy, I think, more than southern France. Okay, he's also protecting West Germany. Seems a bit overcautious, but um, okay. Well, uh, yeah, the only comment I would, I guess, I would have was it seemed a bit overcautious. Um, the only thing I could say about this kind of you know, behavior is like I said before, fifteen dollars. He collects fifteen. Is that it shuts the door before the door gets open? Um, in other words, it precludes the Allied notion that maybe I can swing around and surprise West Germany. But uh, he, he, they could reach southern Italy. But you know, if 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 there was a coordinated landing, you could cut off northern Italy. I, anyways, I, I'm just not. 100% sure. This seems like an overabundance of caution to me, but I'm not a champion. Your thoughts on Italy? I like the buy. Um, he wants a fighter so that he can scramble three Italians from, from Rome to protect his fleet. In so doing, not needing any... Of course, the Germans are uh, AWOL yeah, from yeah. here still, um, but that's good. And infantry, you need defense. Um that's just, and then I disagree with you. I just agree with you. Okay. 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 So we are not seeing a lot of threats up north, and we're thinking this is, like I said, maybe maybe psychologically precluding even the option in their mind is the only thing I could think of. Okay, let's go down south. Oh, I didn't open these up, and we do have some battles. All right. Well, uh, I'd like to say something there, too. Yes, please. I won't give away all my secrets, but I will. Um, <laughs> when you've got the Allies there in 91 and 92, they've got transports. 
They've got some fleet. There, he doesn't have a lot yet, but there's there's more coming from Eastern U.S. There's three more coming. Um, I call it uh, firing your bullets. So the Allies have bullets in their gun in their holster there with those unpredictable transports. What are they going to do? They can go anywhere from Norway to Greece. That's stressful. So I, my philosophy, and I think a lot of players, is go ahead and fire your bullets. Then we don't know where, then we know where you're going to be. Right. So let them in to Normandy and maybe even kind of bait them in sure. and have just enough to beat them back. And then you're not, you're not worried about uh, Rome and North Italy, Southern France, Greece, um, or reinforcing Egypt or something in the Middle East. Just let them fire their bullets. Okay. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. All right. So uh, the purchase is uh, one infantry, one sub, and one transport. Um, myself, I'm not a big fan of the infantry purchase, only because I think in general, um, if you commit... If they commit that much, I think you've got the Navy to uh, to, to uh, amply answer that. So I would say the three bucks myself, but he's champion and I'm not. So he moves into the Marianas, another transport, and he moves, grabs that, and moves into Palau. They've been emptied. He's using his men. He captures these without a fight, I believe, and that's it. Okay, so he has completed... What he intended to do, took the Marshals, took Palau, took the Marianas. Uh, he doesn't have Guam. He doesn't have Wake. Um, Gilbert is in, Gilbert is ours in this game. All right, let's uh, see what he does from there. He is going to reinforce, I believe, six, uh, Caroline. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I saw him. Shutting, <laughs> shutting that door. Oh, yeah. Slamming they're, that door. They're playing free safety. You like football? The Anzacs playing free safety there. They're just plugging I, the holes. I love it. It takes some skill to get to Anzac fighters to, to Moscow. So, very good. Um, and uh, places the sub transport. Uh, okay. The infantry here actually might be less defensive and more offensive. Um, to uh, pick up and drop off in one of these islands. So that, uh, that comes around. I, I came around to his side. So he ends with 11 bucks with an objective leading him to $21. No, $16. Okay. And going down to France. Oh, so let me just, uh, so the Anjak troops, I guess he was killed, must have been killed over here. Um Yes, that's right. He was he was used as a blocker over here. So one fighter. So obviously, again, looking at the battle count going, uh, this is the percentage I choose to present to Andrew. Um, two more for Bryansk, and then the move out of Egypt into Transjordan with only one transport um, uh, being able to assault Egypt. Okay, and then down here we have these guys are aiming toward 42 Java. Uh, obviously, these guys would be aiming. Is there any to so the Anzac ships here? Are one cruiser, one destroyer, two subs? All right, good. All right, let's see what the French do. On comms, moves toward the Middle East, moves toward uh, north to Egypt, and oh, puts them forward. Now that the, uh, obviously that's going to support the British moving into uh, Libya next turn. And that's cleanup. And now we're into round five. How are we looking for time? Okay. Let's see what we can do. Okay. This turn, a little more, more um, texture no, builds. No. Oh, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Sure. Go for it. Uh, let's see. So, so you're at the end of a round. Um, yeah. Total unit value is allies plus 522. Nice. Um, that is really good for the allies at this point. Um, two more things. I uh, just want you to appreciate um, some of what's going on here in the in the Carolines off of that's zone 33. The allied fleet is there. 
And all of this was calculated way ahead of time. Um, taking the three islands was necessary, uh, reinforcing with Anzac, um, taking the two islands with uh, Palau and the Marianas with Anzac is brilliant. You don't use U.S. transports for that. Um, you want U.S. Army men to fight with U.S. planes and, and ships. So he has Anzac do the dirty work, uh, which is veteran. And he's got Anzac planes landed on the Carolines to scramble. The American planes can't land there because I think the Americans just took Yes. Just now. So That's all right. of that is planned in advance. And of yes. course, Andrew, he told us in his interview how he can plan two or three rounds in advance. Um, the same thing with unit. Uh, the same thing with, uh, you saw it in Buryansk, you saw it in Rostov, you saw it in Cox's. It's all over the place. Yeah. This whole round was masterminded a, a few turns ago. Excellent. Um, it's awesome. And yeah, yeah. I picked on the guys too much last time, but um, that is awesome. And on the, on finally on that Australia purchase, I love it, love it, love it. Sub transport infantry, thou shalt buy three units every turn. <laughs> Japan, that, that, that's a victory. That's, that's, uh, that's for the win. Uh, okay. So, um, if they, if Japan ends up getting India, all of a sudden, your forces on Australia matter a lot. Yes. And um, he's got it kind of light right now because he's not very afraid of Japan anytime soon. And you can cover it with American fighters. But thou shalt buy three units a turn in okay. Southeast Australia as whenever you can. I I accept I accept the uh, instruction. Um, very good. Buy three turns. Buy three units. Excellent. All right. So uh, we go into round five. Um, and the purchase this time is three infantry, six mechs, three artillery, and two tanks. So getting more nervous, I'm assuming, with those three transports coming off the East Coast. Um, so, and also there will be at the end of this turn, two transports that are around C zone 81 for the British. So with two with four American transports and four British transports, all sorts of things could happen. So let's see what he does. Um, he's going to attack Rostov. Oh, I, I did. I did want to say that I thought that this configuration right here, um, I thought was was, uh, yeah, like you said, um, this was well done, well done. Um, a great reaction and a great try. He knows Andrew loves this area of the board, the Middle East, and getting into it. And uh, so, yeah, I, I thought so too. But he is going to take the shot um, and we'll do that. Let's see what happens. Okay, and I believe I do open this up. I'm going to open up even a little more, see what the dice do. Misses. Ah, heartbreak. Triple A's. And he gets... Um, Gets, I think he gets enough hits, um, maybe one shy. Uh, and then he gets actually some good hits, three. And three for f uh, versus five. And then another round gets plenty and he gets the miss. It's too bad. Uh, so, and then uh, moves the Germans win. Whoops. And then um, we'll go down to non-coms. Moves in the Archangel uh, in a big way. Uh, moves down to Bessarabia. Hmm. Okay, moves in. Yeah, sure. To Ukraine, just using the map. And with Bryansk right there, um, there's a lot of pressure for uh, Germany to uh, stay put and wait for reinforcements. So that wow, look at that. Going, um, yep, Bryansk, and then brings his transports and they, nope. Does not bring the whole Navy back. Okay. Places. And let's just open this up a minute. Places. Three artillery. Three artillery. So that's some uh, that's some more pips right there. Uh, three infantry in Novgorod. I think that myself is an unusual purchase. Um, two armor and six mech in Germany. Uh, and then loses nothing to blockade. $55.00. And then get some bonuses that makes them go up to 
um, 65. Okay, so uh, we are talking about 65, 15, uh, so that's $80 plus the uh, plus the 69. So he is in, he is, he is doing well for the axis. Um, 149, that is danger zone right there. That is danger zone for money. So uh, let's uh, let's take a look at what Germany did. Um, I mean, this is, you know, obviously you've got to worry about losing a lot of ground at this point in time and your income going down sharply. Uh, like I said, Bryansk has forced him to stay put instead of move to Rostov. Um, the other thing, uh, so obviously at this point in time, Andrew is saying this is a long game because he's – I, these guys are going to meet with these guys uh, in, in in a sense, these guys are going to Belarus next turn. These guys are going to East Poland. So they will meet in Bryansk uh, two turns from now. Um, so that's, you know, pretty, pretty far ahead to be thinking to try to tip that uh, logistics scale. Um, the planes are now back at home where they should be. And, uh, the Atlantic wall is the same, I believe, as it was before. No, no more investments. Well, actually, nope, sorry. He actually did bring two, uh, two units out of Archangel and brought them back to Norway. I guess he doesn't like Norway as a, uh, doesn't like to play against the Norway. He actually, I think in a game, in the interview, he might have said that Norway was the most important um, allied you know, spot for like a factory or something like that. Your thoughts on Germany turn five? Um, it's uh, plain vanilla. Um, yep, yep. It's conservative, it's safe, and um, nothing fancy. Uh, I knew those six slow units were going to Ukraine and Novgorod and then all fast to Germany. It's just textbook. Sure. Okay. Good. Uh, so, uh, so purchased for the Russians, uh, eight infantry. So that is uh, so he is definitely needing every turn from now on. He is going to be needing units uh, flying into this area from the outside because he cannot keep up. Uh, he can place three here, three here, and quite a few here, especially if he has no no Atlantic fleet to uh, put pressure on the uh, the west. Yeah. Um, so he is going to need reinforcements and infusion of troops from the outside. All right, so let's see what happens. Okay, so let's move it over. Oops, there we go. Oops, all right, there we go. Okay, he likes Rostov. He wants it. He's got to keep that, uh, keep him back. Interesting to see if he can keep that Italian can opener from uh, letting him into the Caucasus. Uh, he's conceding it now. Okay. He, he's thought about it and he decided it is not. All right. All right. Everything falls back. All right. He's going to kill the guy, but he does not get lucky. Uh, looks like. Let's just take a look at that battle. Talking about yeah. a time to, time to get unlucky. Right. Okay. Oh, ho, ho. bus yeah. cars. Wow. And then a double hit in return. Wow. And then he's relieved just to get out of there. Wow. Wow. You know, um, you know, you think about game winning um, uh, rolls or dice rolls and, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm not 100 percent sure, but uh, that that certainly can can affect things. You know, if he had been able to hold Rostov, maybe he's tempted to put more units in there and stop the uh, and stop the Italians. Um, mm. But with with losing three, he's he's got to say sorry. I, I I did my best. That could be. Yeah, interesting. Looking for that one time when things went terribly wrong. Okay, now um, I don't think that. Uh, the poor yeah. Italians just got sandwiched. It was just a matter of who's going to kill them. Yeah, well, 
they were on an adventure, right? So, um, the Luftwaffe abandoned them. <laughs> that's uh, that's way too realistic. Um, <laughs> let me just look at the casualties over here. Uh, casualties for that time were uh, it's a plus two, and the um. They rolled in with one armor, one infantry, and three mechs, and they win. One armor lost. Okay, one mech lost. There you go. Okay. Okay, so um, these units are still hanging out in sync. Hang. Let's see what happens. And the non yeah, hurts when you do two uh, little battles like that with Russia at this point, and you underperform in both. That leaves a bad taste in your mouth. Yep, yep. And... Uh, a uh, tough time to, for that to happen. So, all right. Oh, oh. How are we configuring this? It's all going. Whoa. Is that real? Wow, he is playing around with some numbers right there. He is playing around with some numbers. Wow. Is that real? Hmm. Okay, this is this is interesting. Twenty two dollars. Um, okay, so this is the configuration. This is it, guys. Um, this is real. Okay, so these were just to get this job done. Huh. Um, I got a train. I should shut my window. Yeah. 38 in Tambov. Okay, so... Uh, well, I'm confused, I guess. Let me just say it out loud. Is, that, um, is he going to leave these guys here? The planes? Um, so that the... Uh, right, yeah. The, he doesn't have a can opener? He has enough that the Italians can't kill him. That's he's brilliant. Really, it's just brilliant. Oh, he's, he's losing that many planes? No, he won't lose them. The fighters are out of range. It's only a, oh. well, it's a bomber and two infantry and a tank. One, uh, one two, three, four, five. Yep, yep. Well, yep the, the, fighters British, are out of range. the British will be gone. The, the bomber's going to leave. Right. Uh, well, you know what? He might land more. No, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah I, th I find this curious. I mean, obviously, this is, uh, and he doesn't have a blocker here. So he's only going to be dealing with the 22 plus the planes. So mm -hmm. obviously, guys, very, very specifically, I mean, he worked on this. This is not sort of off the cuff. This is oh, no. um, very well thought out. But uh, I would obviously not have done that. But, uh, you know, a lot of people obviously would have retreated back to Moscow. Um, oh, no, he's uh, he's not going to allow him to take and hold Stalingrad. Right, 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 right. Be right back. Sure. Okay. Um, I'm going to pause the video, actually. Uh, I'm on the truck, so I can take down the grass, but we can go to all right, let's see if I can uh, stop sharing. Nope, no, I don't want to stop sharing. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's go down to the Japanese. I'll show you what the Japanese did. Uh, they bought uh, one airfield, one artillery, one factory, one harbor. Wow, big infrastructure and seven infantry. Okay, and then I'm just going to show you what the Japanese do. Use the animation. They move backward into Shansi. Trying to crush that um, artillery. He is going to bring in the uh, tanks and the mech, and uh, he's going to bring. He's going to finish that Shensi off. He's oh, going in. The, he's accepting it. Going in the wrong direction. He's going to take Quick Chow. He's going to pick off the uh, various transports and lose um, his sub, and he's all okay with all of that. He wins that battle without loss. And so the dice have not been as good to Farm Boy, but um, all right. And 
goes back to Siberia. Five transports now bringing that harbor into play. Okay, and he's going to send everything from the Philippines to 36, including infantry off of Philippines, leaving it naked, as the uh, Southerners say. And all of a sudden, that's interesting. Ah, of course. All of a sudden, um, Calcutta looks very um, in danger. Uh, three guys, one artillery, two infantry go there. Um, uh, Har the air base and the um, a Navy Yard and the factory all go. And FEC. He loves FEC. Okay. And then um, five infantry are probably play out placed in Japan. Okay, so uh, let's just take a zoom around. These are obviously very secure using this as a uh, as a uh, factory directly into the land. He'll walk it off. And five infantry, now that he's taken some stuff off of Japan. Asia looks good. Solid, except for Yunnan. French into China, not these two not in danger, knowing the rules that the Chinese cannot go in here. So, uh, and of course, with the fragmented uh, force, even though together they would be able to crush one of these uh, separate, they cannot. All right. Uh, this all looks good. Um, what are you seeing, uh, Gamer Man? Yeah, well, I have to admit on Chen C. Uh, Farm Boy didn't or wasn't able to have a counterattack set up there. And so uh, Andrew doesn't really need the two tanks in the mech down south. Um, they can wreak havoc with, with Russia. So he mowed down the two infantry and artillery. A little luck and didn't lose anything. But the big story um, is what I said a round ago. Big decision on how many UK units to move into unit. Right now, it looks like it might have been too many. Okay. Burma Road's cut off. So what he when he split up his forces between Yunnan and India, it was gonna kind of he's gonna be stuck to that. So obviously, um, the ch Chinese troops can come back to Burma, um, and then we just have to go back to that game of uh, oh okay yeah I guess sni sniping. sniping. Um, he, he might even be able to grab India or Yunnan back, uh, but. Burma looks solid um, if he moves everything there. What are the numbers um, on India now? He built the air base. Uh, he's probably making a move on India next turn. Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. Let's uh, let's see what the money is. That's always interesting. Sixty-two plus the sixty-seven dollars. So again, very strong as far as the money goes. Uh, what does the Americans buy? Let's take a look up here. Two infantry. One. Aircraft carrier, two transports, one sub, three fighters. So that is uh, three, four, five. Will they all go to the Pacific, or are they going to be split again? Um, let's see. Well, uh, but, um, with yep. the German Air Force all at the Ukraine right now, they still um, haven't made it back west. Uh, Farm Boy doesn't need more fleet on the West West Europe, and he knows it. Yes. Um, so mostly he's just sending naked transports uh, because he can. <laughs> Very good. Very good. All right, let's do the movements. Okay, where are we going? We're going to grab the Philippines. We're going to grab one of the money islands. What's he going to do? Okay, he's going to attack that like you had said before. He's going to kill some uh, Japanese shipping. Okay, just playing around a little bit. Taking out that transport. Love that. Nothing tastes so good in the morning as a, tra uh, uh, a lone transport. It's delicious. Okay, Black Battle for 112. I have that expanded for some reason. Uh, nope, that shouldn't be expanded. Uh, Celebes is a walk-in. 
nothing significant there. Um, oh, Marianas. He won the Marianas, huh? Oh, did he actually? Did he miss that? Uh, I thought he moved in. The, I thought he did battle in the Marianas, but maybe he pulled out of that. Uh, 112, Celebes, season 32. And that's 32, right? Yep, that's 32. Okay. So the Americans win, and here's the non comps. And we have more gathering storm into, oh, and he's able to bring those back to white. I like that. Okay, now we've got uh, eyes on the prize. Okay, bring those over. 91 is, like you said, doesn't need to be protected. Okay, and fighter and bomber and, oh, big move. Big move to 110. A little pressure. You're going to feel a little pressure. All right. Four transports. Now that's significance. But Andrew saw them coming. Yes. He accepted the... Uh, Accepted it. Transport placed in 101. Fighter in Eastern. Infantry in Central. Carrier sub transport in West Coast. Two fighters as well, and an infantry there as well. Okay, and that's turn complete. Let's just check it out. Uh, and that is $75. All right. Let's go. Uh, anything to say about the? Uh, this just looks like the uh, uh, an effective mm -hmm. skirmishing of the Japanese Navy in yeah. Central Pacific. It's uh, it's really good. So I'm I only nitpick on one little thing because that's about the most I've got. Um, second sub to 105, the off France. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I, I saw that. Yeah. What in the world? Yeah, you won a convoy damage, but. How much more effective is that in the Mediterranean um, bugging the Italians? It's it's not it's not threatening anybody in 105. I, I was assuming he was um, relieving this one. I think he might be moving this. Oh, okay. but I, I could be I could be wrong. Um, I don't like either one of them in there. <laughs> I, I know. I know. <laughs> 125. He didn't lose anything in convoys last time. Did you can you believe that? He had two uh, two dice rolling for Norway, two dice rolling for Normandy, and he didn't lose anything. Oh. Uh, the, there's some luck right there. So this round, we have seen the Germans um, save some money and uh, cost. Luck, luck is luck is playing a factor. Luck is uh, definitely yeah. favoring the Al Axis right now. A little bit, that's right. Uh, there was no loss in Shenzhen either. That. That's tough. That is, that's, that's tough. Right. No loss. No. Okay. Sorry. Got to get this out of here. Um, okay. So here we are. Chinese are going to explode a little bit. They're going to grab a couple. Humble. I mean, simple. It's not huge, but then he's going to retreat back to Burma and form the spine of the resistance. That's what I'm calling. I'm calling this the Chinese spine. Um. Or a Chinese backbone. Okay. Oh, here we go again. He likes the two against the wall. <laughs> uh, it's funny. It's, he didn't, but the fighter went down here this time. Okay. Too many people up there. All right. Um, oh, oh, look at that. Is he? Oh, okay. It's going to make uh, taking over anything a little bit of work. I like that move myself. Um, spreads out the air force is what I like about it. You have to use, you know, you're going to use two aircraft in every one of these and you don't want two in every one of these. You want two here. You want all your aircraft here or you want all your aircraft here. And now he's got to, he's got to use either the ground forces by themselves, which is going to be killing some of them. He's going to run out of luck at some point in time. So I, li I like this configuration. So now they are out of position. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Chinese collect seven bucks, and uh, but he gets the Burma Road for thirteen. Good, good money for turn five. All right, let's go to the British. Um, one artillery, one 
fighter, six infantry, one transport, uh, two infantry for for um, the Pacific. Okay, what are we going to do? Okay, we are boarding some transports, and we're going back to Holland. We're going back to Holland. Um, now he did say in the in the our talking about the Holland is he saw high value units. And that's what made him risk the first, the second turn Holland attack. He's, I think, I believe there was a fighter in there, uh, aircraft, anti aircraft, and something else. And he said, I'm going to do that. Um, so he did risk it and succeeded, obviously. He invades both. He almost, it was almost like he was listening to you retro, retroactively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he admitted that on the earlier move too. It probably would have been a good idea with, um, to go to go after both. But yeah. um, here's where, yeah, I just I feel pain uh, as Germany because you've got men landing on the. You just even light. You've got I don't know what happened to the other bomber, but you've got only one aircraft that can support the ground, and you're just not going to win those trades. Right. Right. Well, I'll re I'll rejoice while you mourn. All right. <laughs> yeah, you have the good guys. Okay, so uh, okay, he drops some guys, more guys in uh, Persia. Um, always love the logistics of getting as many units as possible, British units, into the Middle East. He's going to move them up, and he's going to bring them over to Persia, ready to uh, really um, position himself to attack the armored thrust that's headed toward Northwest Persia. And Libya posts up in Libya. And then the Navy comes up to 110 again. Okay, the fighters go to Eastern Persia, obviously positioning himself to retake India. Um, so that's what it looks like to me. Uh, and then he falls back with the planes to Russia. And moves forward, drops down, big force there, moves him over to Kazakhstan. And he does, um, now what did he do there? He brought two more, one battleship, one cruiser. Wow, that's the Indian Navy, still hanging around, hanging together. And uh, British undo a move, they undid that. Didn't want to lose Gibraltar, obviously. Places a fighter in Egypt, undoes that, undoes that move, put it up in 110. Fighter moved to where? Where did that fighter end up? Um, oh, it did end up in Egypt. Okay, uh, placing, and then I'll take a zoom over top the board. Um, fighter in transports. Oops. Uh, fighter and infantry go to UK. Transport goes to 110. Wow, I like that. Um, that's a lot of transports up there. And some good fighters for uh, the skirmish action. It's going to cost Germany. He, he now has, he's got, he's got the advantage, I think, in, the, in 110 um, on the coast. Uh, well, one artillery, two infantry. Um Three infantry placed in Egypt and then collects. Oops, sorry about that. Collects uh, $39 healthy money for them. 44. Oh, mm -hmm. that's really good. That's good. Love that. Love to see that. You're in the 40s. Uh, you're, you're, you're doing well. Okay, so he collects six. Um, what do you do here? Successfully posted. Okay, he doesn't edit. Um, all right, let's uh, let's look at how it is. So I'm going to get a little closer. Okay, so you know we're seeing obviously he's going to lose India. It's going to be a skirmish. It's going to be a big move. I'm I'm, I'm not sure how many transports he's going to take over, uh, but certainly he's going to get it back. Um, these can go either way. He's got to walk those guys where they got to go. 
The only thing I, uh, I, I mean, you know, like I said before, if you, Germany right now has not, now won the production war, he, I think he has one more fighter in Russia than he did the turn before, but he lost one. Um, so actually, he's, I think he's got the same actually. So there has been no these six infantry will not make it to Moscow. These two could. Um, none there, none there, none there. So myself, I would have preferred. I know he's trying for a, a, a pressure in the in the west. But myself, I would have placed fighters here uh, just to make sure Moscow never falls. Um, so 110, this is what it looks like. This, this I mean, it looks great. Um, he did not move the sub, dude. Sorry, I was wrong. I would have I would have moved that sub here and then brought it down to southern France if you wanted yep. to do some convoy action. Yeah, make him fight. What is this? I can't tell what's underneath there. That's not a sub, is it? That's to stop the NL. Ah, the NL. Gotcha. Yep, yep, yep. Very good. All right. Well, I love to see, I love to see even, you know, you know, in a lot of times in the axis, you got this big fist. But the allies, man, the allies, sometimes the allies are just walking. <laughs> They're just walking. They're just on the march. Uh, anyway, so what do you have to say about uh, uh, big ally turn five? There's a lot going on now. There is. Um, there's things I can't calculate. Um, but uh, one very interesting thing is Bryansk. Again, you've seen this planned out over turn over turn over turn which you have to do in g40 um he's got two anzac fighters and two russian infantry there um ready for the italians to attack that would be two infantry tank bomber not very good odds but even if italy attacks it and wins and wipes out those two anzac planes they've spent their can opener and that's what Farm boy wants. Um, that is a welcome mat right there on Briansk. The other I can't judge without running calcs, but down in the Burma Road area, uh, uh, since now I see he conceded India completely, um, that makes me wonder if he put too much in Union. I don't know. Maybe there's probably a really good reason for that, but maybe he moved too much north. Yes, he can get back safely and join in Burma, but India is conceded. And I question whether that was necessary. There were three British fighters in the Caucasus. Uh, they went to Kazakh. Um, they were one move from India. They could have they could have stood in there uh, as well. They were in the Caucasus, four moves from from India. So haven't run numbers. Um, but you got to know the Japan players going to throw up an air base and a naval base there uh, for his massive air force to suddenly threaten India. He's got Shan State uh, uh, covered, controlled. So, um, boom, I can hit you with the entire Japanese air force and seven transports worth of men. And that was too much for farm boy. And the question uh, begs the question, if he would have let Yunin go and kept the UK back in Calcutta, would he be uh, safe still in India? I don't know that for sure, but those are some major decisions being made there. Uh, another smaller thing, uh, three infantry in Egypt. Um, there's so there's a there's a grand strategy of flooding the Middle East with the British uh, so that the Germans can't just come on down and take Egypt uh, and all that money. Um, but there's another strategy that goes light there and goes heavy on the Western front to make Germany pay attention to the West. And they can't have all the planes going out to Russia. They can't have all their mechanized infantry going out to Russia. So this is this is the common uh, strategy here. Germany goes south hard. Britain meets them from the Middle East. Uh, that said, uh, we have three transports in 110 now, which is wonderful. But where are the men? Um, 
three infantry put in Egypt investing in long-term plans. But, oh, I really want those three infantry on London right now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, all dressed up and nowhere to go. Okay. Um, let's keep going. Um, I do like uh, – I, I did – I would rather skirmish over Yunnan than I'd skir want to skirmish over India. Now, Yunnan is $6. That's two infantry. India is $6. That's two infantry. But the Japanese get $3 plus $5. So that's where the math doesn't exactly work out. Uh, the, the place it does work out um, is that uh, anything that goes to 39 is out of position for any action with um, interacting with Caroline. So I have um, I have trapped a few Japanese players in my time in an easy Calcutta then they thought they had they thought they had you know won, won a coup, an early coup and they were so out of position that I was able to uh, wreck them after that. Um, so so, uh, so I do think I would rather skirmish over Union myself. Um, and I like this. I, I don't see this a lot. This, I mean, if this had always been there, there's no doubt that India never falls. And uh, I guess, spoiler, spoiler alert, I don't believe India will ever fall again. Um, I don't think so, um, as I remember it. So uh, let's, let's keep going. Yeah, India. Nice. Moves that this probably more sophisticated than I'm, than I'm, than than I'm used to. Uh, the factory getting knocked down to th to three is no big deal right. when Indy can't yeah, produce that too. much anyway, and sure. he's got the the wall there. Uh, not but the but the uh, the Chinese are in a dead end. Yeah. Um. So they're gonna have to go back to Union and get crushed. I don't know. I haven't seen. Yeah. Uh, you can also check out uh, the first time these guys met. Um, and and farm boy won the first one he i believe he did this as well um a real non-committal to the uh to the yunnan um battle of attrition that ended up being in his in his favor i believe uh so all right let's go and the uh, italians build three infantry and two mech so i think in a game where you see the italians building three infantry and two mech you feel pretty good uh, it's better when you don't see them buy anything, but uh, I would rather that than ships and planes. So, okay, and he continues to drain Africa of uh, of those units, and that's awesome. And he does use his Atlantic Wall, but he does have to commit them. So, uh, whoops, I didn't take into account uh, Italian air. So he's he's good on the kicking the Allies out cheap. Right, right. For for the moment, yeah. Uh, okay, and he is going to keep it simple. Whoa! Wow, he likes Norway. He is. He's got some PTSD from Norway. I think <laughs> yeah, I something, something happened that uh, he's like, uh, "You guys are not getting Norway." Right. Wow. 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 And then another can opener in Romania. Um, uh, yep, another one coming. Caucasus is now open for business. Oh, yeah. Rostov. Okay, and this is going to be going to actually finish up the fifth turn. 16 bucks, and let's just take a flyover. This does look very good, I got to tell you. Um, this is pretty impressive. Uh, we've got Normandy with a good amount. Um, obviously, they could be killed. They'll still, with the anti aircraft, they could get lucky with. With what's been going on so far in the game um you know being right here in western germany that looks impressive and now he's so bold that he can actually defend uh northern italy which i think yeah. is the is the wow. first thing you first thing you throw away um in this yeah. in this sequence is northern italy and he feels so confident that he is he's kind of just that's it only four infantry a bomber and a anti-aircraft that's a it's a very confident position right there um and then uh uh, do we uh, do? Oh, Malta. He took. Uh, he took Malta. Yeah, he took yeah. Malta. I'm trying to figure so, out why. Yeah. So uh, and then over here, um, you know, some nice, good, solid movement. Um, working hand in hand, hand in glove. 
Anything you want to say about Italy? Yeah. Zone 105. 105. 105. Off France, sorry. Yep, yep. Uh, you thought the British were being relieved, but they weren't. Um, if a sub or two is in 91 or 92, uh, Italian fleet isn't just roaming around doing what they want. Gotcha. Put them to work. Taking right. away two Italian income is uh, um, it's not that big a deal. You got the destroy. I, I think is that's a destroyer. Oh yeah, that's sitting there to take away the yep. Plus the uh, the two fighters, and if there was a sub off ninety one, all of a sudden you have two fighters. They, an action. Yeah. You actually have a force to to kill this with if you really yeah. wanted to try. I wouldn't venture out, but you can send the sub to ninety three off of South France, and sure. if anybody's going to go get it, then their destroyers out there. Did we lose the British bomber? No, no, the British bomber was in. Was oh, there it is. Oh yeah. Uh, did he? You know, that can hit. That can hit the zone at Malta. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Did that? Did he even use the British bomber no, on this last turn? He didn't no. strap bomb. Didn't want to lose it. Is that a good choice? I don't think so. I mean, I don't know what he had in mind for it, but man, bomb you, uh, bomb Leningrad. For, um. I I have what's called game courage, and I think to myself, if if Arthur Bomber Harris, the real one, would tell you to bomb, you bomb. If you got a bomber and there's a factory right there, you bomb. And there's certainly a factory off Novgorod. I'm so you you can't let these guys just. You gotta hit it. Uh, that's my that's my policy. Yeah. Well, and that uh, that causes a whole new. I mean, every veteran Axis and Allies get, player knows this, but if you hit Novgorod, the Germans are loath to fix it, and right. they, they do not even fix it. And right. then you stopped all production. And then your logistical train, he has to go back to Berlin instead of building in Novgorod and getting cheap infantry that can actually make the assault. Well, okay. kind of trained on if it's trained on the med or or something else then you want a zero percent chance of losing it so right. we don't know right I, I will say that uh i'll venture to say that there's a possibility he forgot uh I'm, i i don't know that for sure but no he uh, moved it from Bryansk to moscow so i don't think yeah. he in, in the in the non-com though um, yeah yeah so. it's possible. <laughs> all right all right uh <laughs> Uh, okay, we got to finish up. Um, I do need to get it to a few other things. Uh, so right here we have the infantry sub and a transport again. He has oh, yeah. purchase, purchase three units. Thou shall purchase That's three right. units. That's All right. right. All right. And he moves the infantry from New South Wales 62. Grabs another one and moves on to Java. Nice moment in the game when yeah. that happens. I love that yeah. moment. Uh, now we have two of the money islands that have to be fought over, which is awesome. Um, sub also joins the fleets as well as Burma getting strengthened by, by the fighter and the two fighters going to Russia. And now he's not worried about the blocker. Um, he is uh, because the blocker, it's already passed over him and now he's ready and the Germans cannot take Moscow or Tambov. All right. Wait, isn't this out of the box? Yeah. Where are the bombers? They only cost 12. Yeah. They're, they're dominant in this version. I don't think nobody's bought one. Nope. Nope. You're right. All right. Uh, fighter ends up in Kazakhstan, actually. So that's uh, actually okay. So he did actually supply. He didn't throw with the two. He's, he's actually supplied uh, Russia with one more fighter. Okay, good. I like that myself. Um, and then we're going to do a quick, um, oh, there's the placements. And he makes some good money, I think, with $19. Okay, I'm going to go to the, uh, and then we're going to take a look at the numbers at the end of this game. So the French move forward, move forward. French fighter, big moment when the French fighter comes off of London. And reaches Egypt, maybe to coordinate with a uh, an attack with its own infantry. That's a nice moment in the game. Oh, a, they're Italian busters. Yes, they um, are. I like that. 
Now that tank has the hide. All right. Um, so the French are here. Uh, here's the French plane. Anzac is here as well. I mean, a lot, lot of, lot of units in this area. Um, he's certainly not going to have a walk in the park with, and he really hasn't. I don't, I don't know if you noticed this, but he has not reinforced these two. These are coming up from the rear. These are coming up from the rear, but they're still a bit away from the Caucasus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still a bit away from. It seems like it's been slowed down a little bit. Um, so this is this is the. 11 and 10 has been the situation for a couple of turns now, and now he's finally got the reinforcements coming. Yeah. All right. Um, and I do like the Anzac fighters up there. This uh, I, this configuration is just... He's, got, he's doing what he wants, actually. You got a lot. Yeah, the Russian player is not just hanging on. It's not just a turtle. It is very interactive. Really, it's a dynamic front right now. He even he he even has a shot on the Urals. If he does the, you know, the presses the tank into the Urals, he's even got a shot on that. Um, with uh, these out of Kazakhstan, so uh, it's, a, it's a real fight on the on the uh, and a bold fight, I think, on the um, on the Eastern Front. I like that a lot. Uh, the Anzac, uh, I, um, this. It seems, I, I would just maybe say right now that I think that the Carolines has enough units. Um, and I myself probably would have gone with a sub down here, uh, but I could be totally wrong, but I would love to, I love the convoy. So I want to make him come get me and then I can yeah. uh, attack him. So I would have put a sub down here. I, I think he's, outnumbering them by a good bit let's look at some um, numbers right now yeah um, so as far as the axis go the axis are making 148 which is huge money uh, and the allies are making 179 um, so you know props to Andrew that's in my opinion a victory for him uh, 146 to 119 390 units to 312 that's a healthy um, healthy uh gap between them and then uh, over here two four seven zero to 19 so still a 500 gap between uh, of tuv between the players um that's the one i look at yep that's big and again after two more rounds i want the allies here right now yep i i, I think so too i mean it's still besides the I think four different battles that could have been a little bit, you know, were very good, very, very favorable to the uh, Axis. Um, yeah, I still like the odds. There are 29 units minus seven. So 29 minus seven is 22 ships right there. There are 28 units, not counting these two. Not counting these, not counting that plane, not counting that down here. So I, I do feel like Carolines is has enough. And I have actually talked to him on a couple of occasions because in his other game, he wasn't as interested in going to season six as well. And he had some good reasons. I'd, I'll have to look them up. Um, but uh, anyway, season six looks open to me. He could go back, uh, but if that if this navy were to go back to sea zone six, in my opinion, that's kind of game over for the Japanese. You're you're in a turtle. Yeah. The, the money the money islands fall apart. Malaya falls apart. Eventually, Quang Tung falls apart. Um, so I'm very interested to see what happens next. Yeah, and I uh, it's really interesting that you say that right there because what I'm dying to say is about india and japan um i mean i'd sit there for a couple hours like farm boy probably did uh calculating this all out but now that he's taken java with anzac 
uh, India's open and Japan can probably get those islands back without too much pain. But what I'm trying to say is if there's a huge stack on India and Japan actually goes and gets it, all those plant planes are landing back on Shan State. A fair amount of fleet is going out there to 39. You've got this massive fleet at the Carolines. Yeah. Wouldn't they wreak havoc? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Hand oh, there's only one transport yeah. there right now, I think. So, but he did. He threw away those transports because he wanted those oh, landing yeah, spots. The... Um, he has one transport. But you're looking at Philippines or something. You're going to get some good stuff. And absolutely. You know, I haven't calced it, but I can't believe India would be juicy with that whole stack there. Right, right. Now, are you talking 29 and 3 and 3 and 1, uh, as well as the 2? So you're talking about the, all of the British units. Yeah, they could have been in yep. India, yep, um, yeah, yep, as well as yep. three fighters that are in Kazakhstan. Uh, now, I want to check one thing, and that is if um, if uh, British units were in Yunnan, uh, let's see um okay so they're on on round three on round three they're all in india and burma yep um round four uh end of round four there that's when he's he moves a, a half the stack up to unit and then they can't yep. make it yep. um that was a major decision yeah it was Yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously, uh, I haven't used this strategy, but um, you do. You do wonder. Um, I mean, I like Chinese troops uh, a lot, and uh, I'm, I'm always excited to see them populate. Um, particularly, they can pop up in even newly captured areas. But uh, yeah, uh, that was costly. Um, I do, I do, I, I do wonder about, um, I, I would even wonder at, like, like, for instance, if he had, this is probably the last thing we can say, and then I got to go, um, but, uh, and I'm not saying this is, this would uh, do well, I'm not saying that this would be a way to uh, to do this well but let's pretend like mm -hmm. let's pretend like we were going to just leave the troops that were here at the beginning and and the anti-aircraft i don't were the anti-aircraft were were they in yunnan or were they in um uh everything was in burma and india at uh the beginning of round before british four Every, nothing was in Union. It was all available for India. Right, right. Well, what I'm saying is that even in this turn, uh, turn five, oh, yeah. the anti-aircraft, were they in Union or were they in India? Uh, let's see. Yeah, all three of them. In Union? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my, my only thought was that uh, if you put this and make this 10, 12, uh, units, yeah, they're going to be lost, but they're going to be lost because he he has to commit the navy and the air force, um, which looks to me like you still have a fairly w big commitment, even to make, let's say it's fifteen units. If you make fifteen to make fifteen units fall effectively, you can't just bring your grounders. So. Uh, it would have fallen and you would have had less to retake it, but I still think it leaves, it, it opens the door for these guys to move where they want to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Australia's safe. So, I mean, you're not really worried about the six, the six city. Um, I mean, that's the nightmare scenario of losing right. India. And that's where I have PTSD, but right. um, wow. I don't, again, without studying it, but yep. it seems like Yunnan, you could just let that go there. Let the Chinese go back and pull up. And it, there's just look at this position right here. Um, Japan would have to, if they send all air, it all ends up whatever survives in Shan State. The, the uh, I don't know, the Navy's down there. You could have some 
some British Air and Navy there to intercept 39 so that he'd have to put more Navy in there. And right. I think this might be a watershed point of the game. Could be, could be. Well, um, we are, uh, like I said, I extremely, um, you know, appreciate this, uh, the Chinese backbone here in uh, Burma. Um, and uh, that is a very impressive move. We'll, we'll see what happens uh, in the next uh, review video. But uh, this, is a, this is some great stuff. Uh, we appreciate Andrew and Farm Boy and uh, their brilliance. And uh, there's, some, there's some texture to this game that is uh, I mean, really interesting. I mean, there is a lot going on, um, whether it be that dynamic Eastern Front. I mean, you just don't see the Eastern Front played like this. I, I, I don't know. He, he, he's he's way beyond me on that that play. And this, uh, even if this this falls, um, like I said, these Chinese guys down here, and now these this very difficult Chinese situation. He's looking great. Uh, and again, like you said before, I would take the Allies right now. I, I would, even knowing that China's going to fall. I mean, uh, Calcutta's going to fall. So, all right. Well, thank you, Gamer Man, for mm -hmm. uh, doing this. Uh, yeah, let me uh, let me uh, get out of this, and then uh, you and I can talk for a sec. Okay, I got to check my battery. I, I'm not getting juice like I thought. Okay. All right. Um, let me. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay crack at 36. This is a crack it out. Uh, as soon as I see the stop recording. <laughs> Uh, on my Zoom account. Nope, that's not it. There it is. Thank you. Coming. Oops, did I end it? There it is. Oops, no, no, I wasn't supposed to do that. Stop recording.